Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Raised by Movies. As you saw from that last episode, we're splitting this one in two. And so we didn't want to kind of release a three-hour episode all at once. So today, what you are hearing is part two of the movies that made us. And that's going to bring us from 2008 up to the present day. So thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Make sure you leave us a review, leave us a rating, whether that's an Apple podcast or Spotify or anything like that. If you're listening to the show on YouTube, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff so we can continue to grow the show and grow the channel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. And I won't hold you any longer. Let's dive right back into the movies that made us, starting with 2008. All right, 2008. Yeah, eight. Eight, 2008. Autumn, hit us with it. Twilight. Solid. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, that's solid. The only good movie in that franchise. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but you know. It was much anticipated. I was there for the premiere. I stood in line for, I don't know how long. An hour, maybe. This is like it's Bangor. We're like, mm-hmm. my mom loved this movie, so I watched it a lot. I was a mall rat at the time, so walking past PacSun and fucking uh, Hot Topic and seeing all of the Team Jacob or Team Edward t-shirts mm. was like, it definitely is nostalgic. Yeah. That and I Heart Boobies. Um, anyways, the bracelets. You guys don't remember the I Heart Boobies bracelets? Yes, I do. Oh, I do you, remember those. I think you just made those in some weird dungeon you were living oh, out of. Yeah, no, those no, are real. <laughs> I did not totally produce those out of pure intent. Uh, anyways, Zach, I feel like our 2008 movie should be the same. It's The Dark Knight. Yes. Yeah. This is this is the movie that would shape the rest of my life. Yeah. Because this is the movie that like I begged my mom to take me to see and she told me that I had to go with my brother who was going with all of his friends who and he was in high school now and he did not want to hang out with his brother and I made him take me because I had to go see it and this is probably the first movie that I remember like watching every single trailer and like w- like tracking when it would come out and like counting down the days I don't even think I saw Batman Begins before this movie but like I was so excited for the Dark Knight and then like watching it being like this this is movies for adults Mm. this is what they do and i don't think at the time that i truly understood like what christopher nolan is trying to do in these movies but i remember being like this is awesome and the benchwarmers death movie is is for children (laughs) i'm interested in adult movies now i'm a big boy now i i am an adult and this really kind of starts to like I am going to go to the movies every weekend that I possibly can. It definitely was like a first recognition that there is actual stuff behind enjoying a movie because you like the movie itself. Like this definitely kind of thrust, at least what I recognize in you is like thrust you into recognizing that there is more behind a movie than just like acting and, you know, a, couple edited shots like this that there's a, it's more of an art than anything else this is like the this is like okay this is what your life is now yeah like this is what you're gonna do and this was like the start of like i didn't i didn't just want to know like who was in a movie like i'm going to obsessively track every movie that comes out to try to find the next movie that would make me feel the same way that the dark knight does yeah and it would be this endless cycle of like Watching something and being like, like for probably the next three years, mm-hmm. I would watch me be like, is this as good as the Dark Knight? Nope. Next. And like, I would just like watch, then I would watch the Dark Knight again every couple of weeks. Mm. And like, this it, is, this is, I, this is a movie that I don't even like that much anymore. Yeah. Like that I have some genuine issues with, but it like, it is impossible to deny like the impact that it has had. Well, like, in on the my beginning, life. it set, like, a super hard, super high baseline. Like, because you take issue with it. Respect. I understand that. That opening sequence is still, to this day, the best opening sequence, in my personal opinion, that I've ever seen in any movie. It has a great balance of, like, a soft approach that reaches a super high peak. 
and the the shrill note that Christopher Nolan puts in there as soon as Heath Ledger takes off his his mask is bone chilling. Like it's just bone chilling. Do you have anything to add? Have you seen The Dark Knight? I watched parts of The Dark Knight. I was making out with my Bible camp boyfriend on a Ooh, mattress while Jesus our friends were on the couch. Not have liked that. Jesus would have said, "Whoa, dude, why aren't you watching Christopher Nolan?" No, it was all <laughs> it was over the pants action. It's all right. Woo, so that PG. was the only time I've seen The Dark Knight. I feel like The Dark Knight is one of those movies. That's the Heath Ledger one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That has like, this is not disparaging towards my wife, obviously, who I love dearly, mm. but I feel like this, The Dark Knight is a movie that has reached people like you, like. People that don't necessarily. <laughs> what are people like me? People, people, people <laughs> that, that sounds so condescending. I, uh, that's why I said it's. Not, I don't mean despair. <laughs> people that like <laughs> no offense no, 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 by no, no, lots no, no. of like, offense. <laughs> like people that aren't like me, who, <laughs> who like obsessively like care about these things. Like The Dark Knight is one of those movies that reached the widest possible audience. Like people that like that probably that like watching movies, but maybe mm. don't care as much about them as I did when in 2008, like it still managed to find those people. Mm. And I feel like movies like that are dead. I don't think there are movies that reach that kind of scale anymore. Well, mo- I would say like movies of this quality make don't reach that largest scale anymore. Like Christopher Nolan is still pumping out movies that do that, but I think a lot of that is based off name recognition and all that kind of shit. But like this is one of those movies that has such a massive cultural impact. Like yeah. Twilight was also one of those movies. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Like this is one of those movies that spawned countless t-shirts of the fucking Joker face that says, why so serious? You know, like, it, it it got a cup at the movie theater. No, The Dark Knight Rises got the cup. Dark Knight also had a cup. I don't think I had the cup. I definitely had the Dark Knight Rises You definitely cup. did, because I was super jealous. But, anyway, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, The Dark Knight, I'm, like, is one of those movies that made its way into a, a cultural note. Beyond just like a movie, like people, if you say why so serious, instantly masses could tell you where it's from. Masses could tell you who said it, when it was said, and it would bring back like a flood of memories associated with that phrase. Well, this is like, it's not the last movie, but it's one of the last movies that like is at the center of culture. Yeah. And like movies just aren't anymore it's like it's like you know game of thrones final season level shit like when breaking bad was coming out type of shit like it's you have to see this this is this is the the massive movie of like that decade i think since i'm actually i might have one of those other movies the next year there's another cultural relevant movie that i'm gonna name we can hold off so let's move on 2009 the blind side a movie I remember liking a lot when I saw it in theaters. Me too. I saw it in theaters probably three or four times. Was it Sandra Bullock? Yeah. She was definitely hot shit. no. I don't know. It was just the story. She was a boss bitch. I cried. It was touching. It's emotional, man. It was emotional until the whole perhaps a very stuff came movie out. Now, yeah. Why? Oh, you didn't well, hear about the the controversy? What's the controversy? That the <sighs> twoies really aren't good people. <laughs> Why did they like a video surface of like? Well, they did. They didn't. The N word. No, I think it was something like they didn't technically adopt him until after he had made it to the NFL. They like had a um, conservatorship what? or something yeah. over him, and they didn't actually adopt him. He's oh. like he's like suing them now for like lots of money, which sucks because oh. it just kills the movie. I mean, it still works as a movie. It does, but it doesn't. Yeah, but I, knowing it was a true story back then, it was like, wow, yeah. these people did something amazing. But now it's like, no, they suck like everyone else they, in the world. They exploited someone that they knew was going to be very good at something. That yeah. sucks, man. Honorable mention, Orphan. I do like Orphan. I remember like seeing trailers, but never actually That's, That it. is one of the movies where the twist is like, what the what? fuck? You would never guess it. So we're not going to tell you. I think I know it. I mean, at this point, I think it's like a well-known thing. Is it? I think I have it locked and loaded. Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. (laughs) 
good. Huh? Is it? Turns out she's like a sixty-three-year-old woman. Or well, something. she's not sixty-three. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! No, she's like what in her thirties, early thirties. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. Good for her. And orphan two. Ugh, Ugh, no good. But orphan definitely honorable mention. Uh, we are on two thousand nine. I got yep. two choices for this year. Um, I have Avatar. Mm because seeing that in those like the first i at least i remember the first huge like you gotta go see this in 3d kind of movie that came out around christmas time it was in theaters forever and i saw it like three or four times and the second one an also highly culturally relevant movie that definitely wouldn't fly today hangover yeah i mean i don't know I think it would fly today. Probably. No, it wouldn't. They say I haven't seen it in a long they time. They use a lot of different like I'm pretty sure in that movie it could be like the second or the third one, but like Zach Galifianakis says the N word. I love Zach Bradley Galifianakis. Bradley Cooper says uh, a gay slur in the movie. Oh damn, okay. And yeah. like I don't know. I mean, like I just remember Alan and his fucking baby Bjorn with the beard and the glasses was the Halloween costume to have that year. That's true. I saw so many Allens. Um, I guess a couple other things. My honorable mention would be Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Which I think is an incredible movie, but like not really something that I really connected with until much later in life. It's because majority of it's in French. And I would say my other honorable mention is Knowing with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Such <laughs> an a, interesting a movie that I absolutely love. <laughs> and it's just like, it's like, it perfectly combines things that I really love, which is just like wild premises and Nicolas Cage. Your kid is really smart. We're going to take him for the human species to survive. <laughs> but my actual movie for 2009 uh, is Land of the Lost. Oh my gosh. Which, really? is, which is one that I loved and yeah. that I remember watching like a lot. I saw that in theaters. I did as well. That's a solid. And like, like the Chaka stuff. Oh my and I gosh, just... Chaka, yeah. The fucking uh, never trust a man in a tunic. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like the world's introduction to Danny McBride. Yeah. Who I love now. And I don't know, I think, I think your comedy definitely comes from Happy Madison. And I think mine definitely comes from Will Ferrell. Yeah. Like a movie that we didn't mention at all, which came out in 2008, The Step Brothers. Yeah. That was a hard one to leave out. But. Plus when. It might not have, it might not have reached that year yet, but Tropic Thunder? Hardy, it would have happened. Ugh, I didn't even consider that one, unfortunately. 2010. Um, 2010. Oh, I was just looking into this. I had Easy A. That's a good movie. Well, that, was, that was Emma Stone's yeah, big breakout. I'm torn, though, because we'll it's kind that. of a funny story came out that year, which yeah. is one of my favorite books. Um, but I, I put Easy A. I think I've seen Easy A more. I think that's something I watched over and over and over again Ooh, because the, it's the, the hilarious. Can you feel this music for it. Oh yeah, pocket full of sunshine. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. It's, it's so good. The whole movie is just hilarious. Amanda Bynes is great in it. I uh, love Penn Badgley. Oh, Ooh, Amanda, Amanda Bynes. Bynes. <laughs> okay, well, back before she had her psychotic break. Back when she, she didn't look like Dog the Bounty Hunter. She was her. perfect in that. Uh, yeah, that was just a funny movie. The the scenes between the parents and yeah. Emma Stone and her little adopted yeah. brother. Stanley Tucci is the funniest part of this yeah. movie. Yeah. Stanley Tucci kills it. It's very funny. There, there was a genuine like emotional scene in there that like I, I genuinely felt emotion with her. It was like when she's in the confessional. Was it right? Like she got into a confessional booth with Fred Armisen's character. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember watching that and genuinely getting a little like teary eyed. And like I remember thinking to myself in that moment, like, dang, she's a fucking good actress. Mm -hmm. Demma Stone's a solid actress. Yeah, she is. Anyways, uh, 2010 movie. I also have two. Um, first one, I'll just mention first, uh, Grown Ups. Yep. I love Grown Ups. <laughs> Did you see that one coming? I did. Yeah. Mile away. And my second one, this is like 
this was another awakening, but it it awakened me to a specific aspect of movies. Sexual awakening? Yeah, no. I just, I don't know what it was. Jesse Eisenberg got me off, dude. <laughs> no, uh, Social Network. Yeah, it, the Social Network's fucking incredible. It awakened me to music in movies. Like, I'd recognized sounds and stuff that elicited certain responses, but as far as music goes, it this was what brought me to a point where I thought, you know... I'm feeling something separate from movies with music, but I'm also recognizing that that coupled with visuals just adds a whole nother dimension. And from that point on, since 2010, I have been listening to movie scores just on the regular because it connects with me beyond uh, my connection to the movies itself. Like it, it elicits image. It makes images in my head and it is just transcendent beyond movies itself. Scores are in a class of their own as far as I'm concerned with film. Uh, there was this weird thing that happened to me in 2010 where for every single day for like two months straight, I would come home from school and watch Clash of the Titans. <laughs> and... <laughs> That is, that's not my 2010 movie. I remember coming home to your house once and you being like, dude, let's watch Clash of the Titans. And I remember being like, no, dude, I don't want to watch that. that. And you being like, dude, come on, sit down and watch it. (laughs) I was like, fuck no. And you got pissed that I wouldn't watch Clash of the Titans with you. Reasonably so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my actual 2010 movie is The Town with Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck and Blake Lively. Yeah. Uh, incredible bank heist movie. One of the best Boston movies, as we will discuss in some some weeks. Plus, it has that one really badass scene in it between Jeremy Renner and Ben Affleck. Yep. We're going to go have some people. I can't tell you who. I can't tell you when. Is that you... supposed to be Jeremy Renner? No, that's Ben Affleck. He's no, like... Jeremy Renner is the one that no. says that. No, no, no. Ben Affleck says that. He goes up to Jeremy Renner when he's sitting also, down. Also, they have Boston accents. Yeah, no. And then Jeremy Renner's like, who's Kyle we going to take? Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, yeah, I yeah, heard, yeah. I heard that time. That's a good fucking movie, dude. It's a great movie. Hit us with 2011. Friends with Benefits. Good movie. It's John fucking Mayer. <laughs> Emma Stone again. Yeah. But I mean, Mila Kunis and JT. Oh yeah, that was that had one of the funniest parts of most movies I've seen is when they're like, she's like, I wish they made a movie about what happened after this romance stuff, and he's like, they do. It's called porn. Like, <laughs> and at the time I lost it. My 2011 movie was my introduction to Tom Hardy, Warrior. Mm. Nick Nolte, so good. <sighs> I just love it. Like, I've never seen a fighting movie up to that point. I think I saw Ali, actually, and maybe Cinderella Man. But this was, had it was so poignant. Like, it had, it had such an emotion behind it. It was so charged. And I remember seeing it at the time and being like, this is really when I started to dedicate myself to like, okay, there's something beyond just like, movies and me enjoying them. Like, there's something here that I kind of want to like, follow through on. Not Limitless. Limitless is an honorable mention. <laughs> uh, my 2011 movie is Drive. Mm. I feel like this is like every everyone kind of has. They're like Drive is awesome. Drive is incredible. It's like Ryan, it's seeing Ryan Gosling do something that he probably really hasn't done before before this movie. It's just like a really great like movie about where you like. I think this is kind of where I started to realize that they, they make movies that aren't going to come to Bangor Mall Cinemas 10. Like, mm. there's a there's a wider world of movies out there that, like, will go beyond anything that I will ever be able to see, like, in my very limited market in the town in Maine. Mm. And that's kind of what Drive was like. Plus, it has one of Hollywood's best jackets. It's true. That Scorpion jacket is incredible. 2012. Pitch Perfect. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Bologna nips? <laughs> what? <laughs> Autumn gets it. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. You I've know? seen Pitch Perfect. What am I missing here? Bologna nipples? 
It's one of the girls that they never uh, let into the acapella group because of her nipples. Because her nipples were like the size of fucking bologna. <laughs> so they show her in like a white tank top with the shadow. <laughs> I guess I don't remember that. It's such a good oh, one. Man. It's good. It's the introduction of Fat Amy, oh, Rebel sure. Wilson, before she lost weight. Plus, uh, fucking Adam Driver. What? Outside of Workaholics. That's Adam Devine. Divine. I was like, Adam Driver's not in that. <laughs> yeah, Adam, Adam Driver. Divine. He's yeah, the magician. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about workaholics. That was my first time. Mm. Uh, say one of your honorable mentions so you and Chef can have a bonding moment. What? So- Silver Linings Playbook? Oh my gosh, dude. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, it was hard to pick Pitch Perfect over that, mm-hmm. uh, especially because I work in the mental health field, my sure. passion for that. And Bradley Cooper does a fantastic job playing a man with bipolar disorder heck yeah he does you know why because bradley cooper's the shit can't do wrong (laughs) that man's incredible i saw that movie in theater four times in a span of a week and a half (laughs) i fucking loved it that was by choice yeah too oh my gosh that was when i got into the oscars i thought it should win everything it's a beautiful movie when jennifer lawrence won she wore an incredible dress i think she tripped up the stage a little bit but that was fine (laughs) One of our best original screen, best adapted screenplay because of the book. It's just Robert De Niro did an incredible job. Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker was in that movie. I fucking love Silver Linings Playbook, man. Uh, oh yeah, they both did a really good job playing mentally ill people. It was one of the more accurate depictions I've seen. Plus, they got chemistry. Yeah, they got fucking chemistry. They do. Yeah. Thank you for making mentioning that. <laughs> sure. Oh, Pitch um, Perfect was good too. <laughs> that was. Uh, is that uh, really not your pick? No, my pick is Django Unchained. Well, that's my pick. Is Django Unchained? Yeah. Although, I don't know what that is. Uh, Django Unchained is a movie directed by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, this is probably when I would start to notice that like being a director like is a job. There's someone who's like I whose vision is behind all this stuff. And that would become really important to me because this would introduce like the time in my life where I'm not just watching movies. I'm like obsessively watching and listening to interviews and trying to find movies that are – find the movies that influence my favorite movies and then go watch those movies and then go figure out what movies influence those movies. I mean like I have a very complicated relationship with Quentin Tarantino, very on again, off again. But like he definitely has opened the door for very – many things that probably wouldn't have been there without him so he's a very good like person to lead you into the floodgate that is like international movies and movies from like the grindhouse era in the 70s and the 60s and all these kinds of things like without him i probably wouldn't know about these things even though i have a on again off again relationship with his own movies he certainly is a very influential figure for me i would say that's true of a lot of people who get into movies too like Quentin Tarantino is a great like starting segue into that kind of appreciation. I would agree. Twenty thirteen, Adult World. What is this? I don't know that one. It's Emma Roberts, Evan Peters. Uh, they work in a sex shop together. Heck Emma, yeah. Emma Roberts is an aspiring poet. Rest in peace, hmm. Dirty Daves. <laughs> oh, you're gonna say Emma Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> She's alive too. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was it's a pretty offbeat movie. Um I don't know what to say about it. I like it. I love Emma Roberts. Evan Peters too. That's the guy they do American Horror Story together. They do, yeah. They have great yeah. chemistry. And as uh well. John Kuzak's in that. They, well, they were actually dating at the time this movie came out. Oh, um, they were dating. Yeah, they're not anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm a big celebrity gossip person so um i don't know she wanted to be a writer and things she was uh trying to pursue a mentorship with a poet that she lo- looked um at highly so and the sex shop helped her. she worked at the sex shop to make money because mentorships you don't get money oh but it's yeah it's offbeat it's cool it's quirky Mm. I like quirky. 2013, uh, honorable mention, Wolf of Wall Street. Actual mm-hmm. choice, about time. Ooh, yeah, that's I, a good one. As as of a as an established rom com fan, um, you really, you count this as a romantic comedy? About time? Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's in a romantic comedy. I don't know. Ha! It says romance sci fi. 
I, I don't know if it's that funny. Like, I think this is probably just like a romance drama. You just don't get British humor. It's pretty highbrow. Oh, excuse me. I wouldn't Sorry. expect Go ahead. To... I'll shut up. No. It's got the queen, Rachel McAdams. Heck yeah, dude. She's great in rom-coms. She's great in everything. Um, I love her. It's has, just like... has, have we already passed the year of the vow? Yeah, I think so. I like that movie. That's a good one. But it's just like one of those... Things. Have you already passed the year of Dear John? Oh my Definitely. God. Do you want to have a Nicholas Sparks episode? Honestly, it's not a bad are idea. The vow, are both The Vow and Dear John Nicholas Sparks things? Yes. And The Notebook. I knew The Notebook was. Yes. And there's another one about... There's um, many other ones. Yeah, no, he has like... He's a fucking legend, dude. Yeah. What's What's the one with Josh Duhamel? Is that a Nicholas Sparks one? Yeah. Uh, is it? The one with the lady from Dancing with the Stars? Yes. Oh, yeah. Safe Haven. Safe yes, Haven. that is also that is, Nicholas yeah. Sparks. Yeah. This guy is every. What, what about the one with Zac Efron? Yes, also. Oh, the... Oh, my Saint God. Yeah, no, he's got hits, dude. Like, you don't realize this what guy, this... This guy's deep cuts are hits. You want to know the crazy thing about it? He's an ex-military man. Why is that crazy? Wouldn't it be wild? Isn't it wild that like an ex-military man that's don't like all of these movies have like soldiers in them? That's not that. Not crazy. all Dear of John them. Does. Dear John, and isn't Zac Efron a soldier in the Lucky One? Uh, I don't know. I know he's a guy who likes sailboats. He is a U.S. Marine. Nice, mm. nice. Thank you for your service, Zac Efron. Temp, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Here's a question: Is Knights in Rodanthe a Nicholas Sparks? No, book? no idea. No, it is not. Yeah. Uh, actually, I feel like that might be. Yep, it is. The 2002 novel. <laughs> yep. Look at this. All right. Well, Nicholas Sparks, here we come. <laughs> and uh, actually, now that I just remember this, A Walk to Remember is a Nicholas Sparks book. Is it actually? Suck on that, you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, well. The Choice, The Longest Ride, What's The, the Best cho- of Me, The Last Song, The Lucky One, Safe I Haven. forgot about The Last Song. <laughs> Dear John, Nights in Rodanth, The Notebook, A Walk to Remember, and Message in a Bottle. Yeah, so you guys go fuck yourselves. This guy's got... <laughs> Nicholas this Sparks is, is, These are good. Yeah, no, he's pretty fucking badass, man. <laughs> so are, are you not... A notebook fan or the year that came out there's the movie that's better when did what year did the notebook come out it was 04 hmm. what did i have for 04 no i love the notebook oh i chose saved instead it reached me more that's fair the notebook's beautiful but i didn't have love like that back then so in 2004 <laughs> yeah go figure i ain't never love like i've gotten now anyways about time it's just cool because oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just cool because it takes like a really unique like approach to rom- romantic comedies where they throw an absolute curveball in there of this dude being absolute to... curveball of time travel. No one's ever done that before in a romantic comedy. You tell me when. I'm sure that's happened. No, it hasn't. Last from the past. You tell me. The lake house is it? The lake house? No, the lake house is in time travel. The lake house is like messages between time it's not like people going back in time well, for it's kind of close i'm gonna give it to her it plays with time it's not time travel it's, i'm just saying it's a, a magical very, mailbox i'm, saying I'm sorry but it's no. a very well executed <laughs> movie but it's not that original like you're trying to give it credit for it in the way you know what i like the movie <laughs> no you don't but it's not like <laughs> not like i do i can't believe someone thought of this this is insane if you like it make it your your 2013 movie why would i do that when the movie spring breakers came out in 2013 fair point which is an incredible movie about three girls going to spring break Four. that's true four girls going to spring break and meeting james franco alien the alien drug dealer and Gucci Mane. And- <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, this is a movie about the American dream. This is a movie about <laughs> people trying to make it in this world. It's a bunch of bitches in bikinis with ski it's, masks it's and a, shotguns. It's a lot more than that. <laughs> it has it has the that amazing diner robbery scene. It does. A lot of great stuff in this movie. Yeah. Uh, it's a movie about commercialism. It's a movie about capitalism and greed you guys aren't seeing the nuances of spring break it's also directed by harmony corinne who i love dearly mm. how dearly do you love her it's a guy him 
Very. <laughs> you just you said the same thing about me, so I had to clarify there. <laughs> I mean, it's not Facebook official yet, but. We're working towards it. Oh, wow. Okay. Dear Harmony, I'm writing you again <laughs> just to say I love you. <laughs> it's like fucking, it was just like, Dear Stan. <laughs> 2014. The movie that I asked you to watch with me and you did not, The Voices with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I did watch this. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. I absolutely did. Then you didn't like it. You didn't watch it with me. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I what did. What happens then? Tell us what happens. Where Ryan Reynolds kills somebody and then the voice and the animal He doesn't him. just kill one person. Well, he kills multiple people. But, and then he's trying to get the attention of the girl that he works with. In the Ryan factory. Reynolds is schizophrenic and he has a cat and a dog. And the cat and the dog each are like an angel and a devil on his shoulder. Oh. They talk to him. He hears them speaking to him. Is this one also a comedy? Uh, dark comedy, I'd say. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he plays a schizophrenic man who ends up killing multiple women that he dates and putting their heads in his fridge. Oh, why? Because he's mad at them that they won't keep dating him. But then the cat and the dog, they tell him either to leave the girls alone or to kill them because they don't love him. They don't accept him. It's another, it's just a great depiction of mental illness. Again, like, it, it's just great. Who's the good one? The cat or the dog? I don't remember, honestly. Well, if you ask me, I'd Did say the you cat. Watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't remember the details. But uh, I don't know. I love that movie. I love it. It's got Anna Kendrick in it for a brief time. You get Before a nice headshot in the fridge. Days. Oh yeah, hell oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. May native represent. Represent. It's just. A, it's a good movie. It's different. It's something different. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is he did some interesting choices before he got that whole sarcasm thing going. Yeah. This would be after that. What? This is kind of after that. What, what, what We're in twenty fourteen by now. Yeah. By now he's he's Deadpool. Oh. So yeah, you wouldn't Makes expect him sad. to do this movie though. And I don't think a lot of people have even heard of it. I haven't. Yeah. But you should watch it. It's very good. Well you're gonna have to watch it. Yeah. Are we gonna cover it? Oh, it's gonna be hat. in the thing. Yeah. We're doing the bingo draw. Oh yeah. Thank God. Get in the cage with the balls. Yes, we are. It's going to be a lot of balls. We've had a lot of honorable mentions. <laughs> a lot of balls. So you're good at handling balls, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. What's your 2014 movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I went with Boyhood. Yeah. There was a lot of hitters this year. There was a 2014 is a good year. Yeah, it was. Fucking, I rem- uh, it was this Interstellar, and there was one other movie that I'm not going to say because I think it's what you probably chose. Probably. Um, but I remember hearing what the concept for Boyhood was and being absolutely blown away. The idea that somebody... Wait. Are you familiar with the concept of Boyhood? Never heard of it. You can go. Tell us. So Boyhood is a coming-of-age movie where they let the actors age in real life to film their portions of the movie. Very cool. So the kid that you see at five years old is this is the exact same kid at seventeen. Just they filmed the things twelve years apart. Wow. But like they filmed it with the technology that they had at the time. So beyond just the kids aging, you also see the quality of film age with them, which hmm. I thought added some something so fucking extra to it. That plus an incredible original song for it. Richard Linklater knocked it out of the fucking park. Ethan Hawke knocked it out of the park. The kids acting gets a little rough towards the end, but overall it was just a reach for the stars that I personally as a movie watcher would have never thought possible on that scale. And I am so glad that I got to watch that movie. My 2014 movie is Whiplash. Yeah. One of the greatest movies of the last 10 years, last 25 years last ever <laughs> years <laughs> I, I i love this movie a movie about determination how far you are willing to push yourself even if it's to very like unhealthy lengths to oh achieve, you had me watch this yeah to okay. achieve what you want to achieve and get out of life it's a great movie it's a great movie also yeah. jk simmons Ooh. <laughs> 
Ooh, Papa. Not my tempo. <laughs> Were you rushing or dragging? 2015. We're almost there. The Duff. Ooh. Yeah. Is that designated ugly dick? fat friend mm. nothing you would like not a movie you would like at all you weren't a duff may whitman you wouldn't know wow that's yeah i was zach's duff. i i mean like i re- i remember this movie coming out but i i did i never okay saw it. well it was highly relatable especially in 2015 when my best friend was a very skinny girl with perfect teeth and long brown hair she always got hit on at the clubs and everything and i <laughs> i watched this movie and i was like shit I am truly the designated ugly fat friend. I am the friend that's around to make her look better. And I really did think that in 2015. What do you have to say for yourself, Zach? Why is this my fault? You piece of shit. (laughs) Because it's like, it's a storyline that's so true, especially when you're younger and in high school. Oh, so you acknowledge this existence. This is not what I'm saying, but I'm saying like, yeah, this is a thing that happens. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because of society and the way we look at people, True. fat is bad, skinny is good. So I was the ugly fat friend mm-hmm. that followed this hot skinny girl around. And that's the same for Mae Whitman in this movie. Although she ends up getting the guy in the end, which is fantastic. He's a hottie, by the way. He's super hot. Bella Thorne's in this briefly. She's a stupid bitch. I can't stand her, but she is in this. Um, Redheaded Bella Thorne. The She's from the American, Disney Channel originally. American, the the shop where they get the American flag upside down and they oh, twist it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how I couldn't think of the name, but I can remember that. Assassination Nation. Yes. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. I remember that movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, Bella Thorne's a terrible actress, though. True. She should stick to porn. <laughs> See, that's what Make I was trying to... Make a lot of money doing that. That's what I was, That is who that is. She's like a porn star. Uh, she's from Blended with yeah. Adam Sandler. No, she's Drew actually Barrymore. not a porn star, but she might as well be. If you watch her TikToks, she's a, something mm-hmm. else. She, terrible, terrible actress. She's of Blended fame. Yeah. Oh, Drew Barrymore. Adam Sandler. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, this movie, like 2015, my 2015 movie is the only movie that I've ever seen that's made me cry. Oh. Um, I felt a lot of emotion with this movie. Uh, it was Inside Out. Oh, the cartoon? The Disney one? Yes. I never watched that, but I heard it was really emotional for a lot of people. Bing Bong? No, you I'm, gotta watch it. I was like, yeah, I've never watched it, but... You will understand how sad it was because... I hate you. Why? What, dude? That's it, like that's a fair movie choice. I really no. did hear that was emotional. Bing Bong fucking got to my core. I know. I know. Okay? I know what I've done. Just... <laughs> Let me have this. I, I'm 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 glad that you were sharing this with us. Yeah. I just I feel like there's very emotional moments in that movie, and you're like, Bing Bong. And I think that that's not your fault. Yeah. That that is Pixar's fault. That that like just you having to describe that like undercuts the emotion of the entire movie. Where you're like, man, it's very emotional. This kid has to go through all these things. You're like, oh, what was a very sad part in the movie? And you're just like, well, Bing Bong. It, and like, no, well, the, it has to appeal to its audience. Bing Bong its is target the audience to the collapse of innocence. Oh, damn. It equates to that because you have all of these emotions that need to still move on. But then a childhood that is encapsulated in this elephant being of an imaginary friend. And he goes on to be forgotten. Eventually, you know, happiness saves the day and same with sadness and then bing bong makes his way back but it's just the idea of bing bong was a representation of her innocence her pure chaotic happiness and that had to disappear in order for her to not ruin her life and it was just it's 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 a necessary evil that is just incredibly Mm -hmm. sad and it struck a chord yeah not seeing that movie but hearing things about it i think it was really necessary that it was made for children nowadays not even just children nowadays yeah for everybody right well i just feel like it's it's one of those movies that has enough um i want to say like you know how like pixar movies like adults watch them and they pull stuff from it that kids Mm -hmm. just don't but it's like made that way yeah like that something that inside out gave like something very important inside out gave to older audiences yeah i'll have to watch it me bitch (laughs) my 2015 movie is the horror thriller directed by jeremy sonnier green room 
about a band that gets is. stuck in a room in Tormented oh, by neo-Nazis. Oh, God. Uh, that was the worst. <laughs> this is an incredible movie. No, it's not. I love it. It's the worst. It's so long. It's not even that long. Right. That's my point. <laughs> uh, well, There's... moving right along. <laughs> 2016. Oh, my God. Uh, Me Before You, starring Amelia Clark. Me Before You. Me Before You. Is that the one about the guy who's paraplegic? Yes. yes is this uh... Nicholas Sparks? No. No. It's not. No. But it is beautiful. I know that I, the only thing I know about that is the... Um, the fucking bumblebee tights yes yeah. um it's a basically it's not about assisted suicide but assisted suicide is a part of the movie um amelia clark plays lou who is hired to come in and be the caretaker of will who is the paraplegic um he's a curmudgeon like yourself zachary Ooh. Um, but because Respect. he because he's paraplegic, <laughs> like this guy already. <laughs> he used to be a very uh, prominent businessman. He was engaged. He got hit by a motorcycle, became paraplegic. But uh, Lou wiggles her way into his heart and they fall in love. Um, but his plans for assisted suicide do not change. So uh, she goes to Switzerland with him and uh, he and spends her last days with him. That's so sad. It's super sad and beautiful, and their characters are just awesome. Lou, Amelia Clark does fan. I fell in love with her in this movie. This was before Game of Thrones. Um, mm. Was it? No? Okay, it was before I saw Game of Thrones then. Either way, I love Amelia Clark. Good name, too. Yeah, well, she's like British or something. Scottish. Australian. Australian. She's foreign. She's got to be from like Zimbabwe or something, right? <laughs> She's got the accent. <laughs> um, 2016. I have two movies this year. First off, La La Land. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Secondly, I love this movie. And Zach actually introduced it to me. Everybody wants some. It's a great movie. It is not just a great movie. It is the ultimate hangout movie. It is the ultimate casual viewing. Because all you're doing is enjoying a group of people that... I find is impossible to not like. That's true. Um, my runner up for 2016 is Moonlight, mm. a movie examining a male's life as he grows up and like is being confronted with who he is versus who he thinks he ought to be. And like, it's kind of told in three sections where you have him as a kid, a teenager, and then an adult. Uh, great movie, but my actual movie, uh, a devastating movie from this year, which is Manchester by the Sea, mm. which is just a, it's not an easy movie to sit through. It's devastating, but it, like, it, it kind of shows you like that movies can make you feel something but for people that are imaginary and aren't in front of you. And you can develop an actual like connection with a character over the course of two hours that makes you feel something and feel alive for once in your life. Oh, uh, damn. Okay. Plus it's hilarious. And it is very funny. <laughs> it's a very, it, no, no, no. It actually is like a very funny, like devastating movie. Yeah. It's like something like I shouldn't be laughing at this, but like, I can't help it because it's so dry. It, it knows like when to provide you with like just a brief moment of levity before mm. it like hits you with something else. There's a great balance in that movie. And it has the, most impactful like moment when they're in the police station that entire sequence is just something to be amazed at that is peak cinema is casey affleck at his best mm -hmm. hmm. i remember seeing that in theaters with like a group of people like i saw it it's a weird movie to watch with a group because you're just like it's a weird thing to do to somebody else like, yeah you're gonna watch this well, you're not gonna be okay afterwards well, no, because like it was it, we were all seeing it for like the first time and we didn't know what we were in for because all we could think was like oh casey affleck he was in goodwill hunting he was funny in that i bet this is the same thing and then it wasn't and i remember sitting there and i definitely saw this with a group of people that at least at the time i shouldn't have seen it with because they weren't taking it as seriously as i wanted to 
So it was kind of like those impactful moments. All they could remember was that dry humor. And I remember thinking to myself, like, dude, shut the fuck up. You don't, you, like, I don't understand how you're not devastated by this right now. Yep. I look forward to watching it again. That's a weird statement to say, but. 2017. Ingrid Goes West. Oh, I have seen this. What's that? Aubrey Plaza, Elizabeth Olsen. Aubrey Plaza is <laughs> in the thing I have here in my notes. Is she's an unhinged social media stalker. Nice. So she moves to L.A. to follow one of her uh, one of the girls she follows on Instagram who's played by Elizabeth Olsen. She wants to uh, make her life similar to Elizabeth Olsen's and be the popular girl. She's a little bit neurotic. Does she succeed? No, no spoilers. Uh, that's, right, that's right. This is recent enough. Oh, uh, it's great though. I don't know. It's funny. It's another offbeat movie. Is it like serious kind of thing? Uh, or is it a comedy? comedy? It's again, a dark yeah. comedy. How's yeah. Aubrey Plaza doing something like that? I I thought she was great. She played a crazy neurotic Instagram girl perfectly. Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Love that shit. I love that shit. <laughs> um. Anyways, my 2017 movie was Call Me By Your Name. I don't know what else to say other than it's beautiful. It's filmed. It's set in my home. My home away from home. <laughs> it takes place in Italy. Oh, my it takes God. place in my, my home in my head. They eat a lot of apricots. And I just remember, like, when I picture my dream home, I picture that house. Like, it's just so beautiful. The setting is incredible army hammers charismatic as shit and all they could think the whole entire time is like oh my fuck this is badass i never thought like i it's not a, that's not a word i would use to describe this movie why not dude i don't know if it's a very their love for each other is incredible man i'm not saying it isn't it's something to be in shock and awe. like i remember seeing it and being like because there's like I find that a lot of movies do a good job connecting with like puppy dog love, but not many movies are able to attach like first love too well. Hmm. And this is one that it's like, it might be Army Hammer's not in like, this might not be his first love or something along those lines, but it's not really about him. And when it's you're It's about Timothy Chalamet. It's about Timothy Chalamet. So like watching that and being like, like I connected with that shit. Where I was like, this is first love, man. Like, this is some intense kind of shit that, like, is not just a throwaway gag. Like, this means something to him. At least, like, you could tell that it means something to him. Especially by the end. Plus, that last credit sequence That's good. blew my socks off. I'm not... I, ugh. Fucking love that shit. Yeah! Come on. Yeah! I've never seen it. <laughs> It's about two gay guys in Italy who is like the 80s. Something like that. Something like the 80s. And they love each other. Man, they love each other. But neither one of them has come out of the closet. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that because Army Hammer is like a graduate student and Timothy Chalamet is still like a kid. What? I don't think Timothy Chalamet is like over the age of 18. In this I movie. thought he was a college student. He might be, but I don't think so. I thought they were both of age. I... Actually, I feel like he's like 16 or 17. Oh my fucking gosh. That, that... might not be true, but I I feel like that is like what is happening. I'm praising a predator. Kind of. Shit. But I mean, the movie's not phrased in that way. Cut this out. Cut it all out. No, don't cut it out. Leave it in. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking you. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> no, I, 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 I could be wrong about that, but I, I do think that that is what's happening regardless of whether that's happening or not like it is a good like if 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 you take age out of the equation <laughs> well, well I, I think it's why i think it's why some people had a problem with the movie where you're like yeah. oh man like you're really glorifying grooming was that was that like in the book i've read the book i don't know mm. i don't know but like eat regardless maybe he is a bitch i don't know but taking the story out of it i know like that i remember connecting with it just because like it's it I, I never really got to see the beauty of a place as i never felt the beauty of a place as much as i felt the beauty of that setting was captured as much as it was in that movie mm -hmm. you should really check out the sabrina the teenage witch movie which is also set in italy <laughs> do i need to watch the show first 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I think there's a couple of Sabrina the Teenage Witch movies. There that is. kind of came out like interstitially between seasons. But one is in Italy. It's also a Mary Kate and Ashley movie in Italy. Oh, there's also a Hilary Duff movie. In there's also a Rugrats movie. Oh, you movie. betcha. The Lizzie McGuire movie. This is what dreams are so made of. I did, why that hey one? now. Hey now. When did that movie come out? Uh, we missed it. I don't remember, though. That should have made 2018. It's coming 20, up. 2018. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my 2017 movie is Paul Thomas Anderson's Phantom Thread. That was my backup. Yeah. Phantom Thread is an incredible movie. Uh, it's it's kind best. of another movie about someone obsessed <laughs> with their work and someone kind of disrupting that and how he kind of handles it and kind of how like the agreement they kind of have to come to for him to continue on with his work and for their relationship to work and it's just uh it's a great movie 2018 dude you're right that's <laughs> paul thomas anderson's best movie no but it's a great movie what's his best mm, there will be blood you're wrong okay 2018 <laughs> <laughs> uh i feel pretty with amy schumer I uh, have not seen this. I haven't seen it. Is it the one where she goes with her mom to like that foreign country? No. I haven't seen it then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if that was the one you had seen <laughs> No, she um she hits her head on a bike in a cycling class. So she's like the duff in the movie at the beginning of the movie. She hits her head on this bike in cycling class and she like faints essentially and wakes up and thinks she's the most beautiful woman in the world. And walks around with that confidence when nothing has changed about her. She looks exactly the same. It's basically a movie about how it doesn't matter how you look. If you emanate this confidence and love for yourself, then you'll go far. I love myself. It was a big part of my getting to love myself story. My no, self-love that's story. solid though. It's got genuine connection to you. That's awesome. Michelle Williams is also in it. I do like Michelle Williams. I like people named Michelle. Generally speaking, across the board. I don't know if I'm willing to go that far, but... Mm, my mom's middle name is Michelle. Oh, that's a middle name, though. Middle names don't count. Mm, okay. Uh, my 2018 movie is by far my favorite um, score of all time, uh, If Beale Street Could Talk. Mm -hmm. It's such a good movie. And it got gypped. Movie. It got gypped. Got fucking gypped. No, it didn't. How? Oh, you know sorry, what won you're the right. score? It, it lost to Green Book. You're right. Not even just lost to Green Book. You know what it lost to in best score? Black Panther. Didn't deserve the score, Zach. Barry Jenkins knocked it out of the park. He didn't make the score for the movie. He was in on it. Uh, my tw uh, runner-up for me for 2018 would be First Reformed. Paul Schrader's First Reformed. Uh, a movie about a priest grappling with how the world is changing and if this world is really even like worth saving but I, the best movie of 2018 is mandy this is a great kind of like revenge thriller that's kind of a lot more than that but at the same time isn't and stylistically is one of the most interesting movies to be released in the last few years nicholas cage has a great performance in it Plus, it uh, has a great score, and that great, great that, score, great visual style. Oh my gosh, dude! That that scene where the guy has like a face, kind of like superimposed on mm -hmm. his face, is unsettling. That's true. And we'll move on to twenty nineteen. Ah, uh, I had um fighting with my family. It's in a very enjoyable movie. Never saw it. No, it's uh based on a true story about wrestling oh never the vince vaughn yeah no. well vince vaughn is a very small part of it oh, I was say. <laughs> so, uh, he's a very small part of that wayne movie. the rock johnson there you go yes. yeah yes. vince vaughn's in it too uh florence pew yes, yes. I don't florence remember. pew yeah i don't remember vince vaughn vince vaughn's movie. the coach vince vaughn's the coach dwayne the rock johnson has a cameo at the end yeah he's got the fat guy from hot fuzz nick frost him yes yeah Respect to him, dude. He's good. Like he's a probably good actor. I like that movie. Yeah, I had a small amount of time where I really liked wrestling, um, because the guy I was hanging out with. So we watched it all the time, and this movie came out, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. 
I like this one. Yeah, that's all though. It was that or Book Smart. I love Book Smart. Yeah, I couldn't really remember Book Smart. I have to watch it again, but I remember while. liking it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, 2019? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Parasite, dude. No question. Yeah. It I was, had a feeling. It was going to be Parasite or it was going to be Knives Out? I'm glad you picked Parasite. I'm glad I picked Parasite yeah. too. I love that movie so much. I, I mean, I've 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 seen. Uh, I saw like some foreign films before that, but this was the true like. I've seen some foreign <laughs> films. I've seen some of those <laughs> subtitled movies in the past. I've read some of those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the first one that I saw where I was just like, "Oh shit!" There's like stuff beyond what we have in the U.S. Like, I've seen them, but none of them have really struck a chord with me quite like Bong Joon-ho, uh, his Parasite movie. Yeah, I know the director's name. If I hope I got it right, I may not have opened it. Uh, apologies <laughs> if I didn't. But anyways, Parasite knocked it out of the park, and it has one of the best twists I've ever seen, and I've never gripped my seat. Just like in fucking panic more than this one like it's clever and i say that this movie is like two different movies in one so you can enjoy it on like two different levels like it's that good and at the time that that was just something that i really appreciated about this beyond just bringing me to an international scene um but it it expanded my appreciation for movies more than any other movie probably in the past like five years outside of if bill street could talk my 2019 movie is probably the most underrated movie from the last 10 years, which is stars Elizabeth Moss and oh is gosh. Her Smell. Oh no, I couldn't see that coming. Which is a movie about a like punk rock musician in oh, the 90s. Oh, that's right. Struggling with like addiction and it's told in like five elongated scenes about her like trying to overcome this and trying to mm. figure out like, if she can even be a part of this life if she's not using and because it's such a ingrained in the scene and in the culture and like is this even is there even a life for her outside of like drug use and making movies or making music and i not enough people saw this movie the answer is yes by the way yes i mean that's kind of what <laughs> actually it's, it's left very ambiguously but like in case you're asking yourself the same questions yes the answer is yes there is a uh life. i mean uh <laughs> honorable mentions for this year there's there's quite a few but like Midsommar and Uncut Gems, I think would be the big the big ones for honorable mentions. Mm. Mm. Adam Sandler. Mm. Now we're getting into COVID times. Fuck. 2020. Mm. That's why there weren't many options. 2020 huh? is a bad year. Disagree. Yeah. Disagree. There's a huge I hit. I know what you're going to say. There's a huge fucking hit that I just but feel. But you're like not up. Everybody's brushing on the rug. Autumn. I am changing my answer. Okay. What because I just have? remembered a different movie. I had the wrong Missy. Mm. Oh, fuck yeah. The movie rules. I watched that movie so many times. Hilarious. Mm. David Spade made a a brief comeback there that's true but no i'm changing my answer to jacinta it's a netflix documentary about a woman from lewiston maine actually oh really shout out to lewiston yes um she is a drug addict and they film her in jail in prison um it's a family of drug addicts her mom's a drug addict she's often in prison at the same time as her mother but they show her overcome her addiction in this movie in this documentary they show her actually coming out of rehab and then relapsing they show her putting the needle in they show um the woman that's documenting this they show her sitting right next to her while she's doing drugs yeah um, it's really intense, really powerful. I follow Jacinta now on Instagram. And I mean, Instagram all, isn't always real, but as far as you can tell, she's still doing really well. She has a young daughter that she um, saw a couple times throughout the movie, and they showed her relationship with her daughter, her relationship with her mother. Just, it was beautiful. It was a really beautiful movie. Dude, watching somebody overcome that kind of stuff is massive. Yeah. It's, it, it, it gives hope, man. Yeah, it uh, it That's did a lot all of things. We can hope for in <laughs> movies. Yeah, well, my mom's a drug addict, so watching it was really intense. Struck a chord. It was different. Sure. Yeah. Me. You. I. My movie I, is gonna be just as impactful. No, it's not. As and don't even build it that way. <laughs> it's Hoobie Halloween. 
I didn't watch it. I didn't you take, should. I did not take the time to watch it. I know Halloween's in the title, but it's an all year round movie. You like Rocky Balboa? <laughs> not really. Not particularly. Oh, you will after this movie. <laughs> okay. Adam Sandler, like he, he fucking does himself like an homage because he references uh, his own fucking movies throughout the entire fucking thing. And you know, you know that Adam Sandler is not in Rocky, right? No, I, Rocky Balboa style. <laughs> you know, like that part, you remember that part? All right, my 2020 movie. No, I'm, I got to do my honorable mention. No, you don't. It's fine. Do you know what it is? Yes. All right, fine. My honorable mention is also stars Elizabeth Moss, two years running. Oh my fucking gosh. Okay. It's The Invisible Man. It's such a bad pick. Which is a great, that's why it's an honorable mention. Yeah. Uh, my actual movie from this year so the Invisible Man is the last movie I saw in theaters before COVID, yeah. and I loved that movie minus a few things. Uh, my actual pick for 2020 is The Sound of Metal, yeah, which is a movie about a, a deaf drummer who's like trying to overcome. Well, he he's going deaf, and he's trying to overcome this. And it's a movie about like having to come to terms with your circumstances and the cards that you were dealt, and how we so desperately like want to overcome things that maybe we literally just can't yeah and so it's a beautiful movie starring riz Ahmed, and that's 2020 2021 uh i had a hard time with 2021 so i landed on the mitchells versus the machines i love that movie though <laughs> i really do oh my kid made me watch it we I both we've watched seen it. that movie like four times damn yeah. it pride's incredible dude it but it it wasn't bad it wasn't one that made me want to pull my hair out anyways uh, uh not the first three times yeah the fourth time <laughs> maybe but that's all i could think of i was looking at all the movies from that year i'm like uh i don't remember like any of them i had a very tough difficult time with 2021 I didn't. Okay, well, you don't have to brag about it. Well, you can talk about <laughs> so- that when it's your turn, <laughs> motherfucker. I had two that yep. I want to mention. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong. Mm, okay. Because I love the monster verse. And watching King Kong take out Godzilla in a rear naked choke hold in the third round <laughs> was incredible. And I also loved the Green Knight. Oh. That sound effect and the way that that night looks is no doubt some of the best costume work that I've ever experienced. The booming sounds really just, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, like it's just kind of like makes you want to do go cross eyed and do the whole like thing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. (laughs) (laughs) Get with it, broski. Uh, for 2021, an honorable mention for me. This movie is just like a ton of fun. Uh, it's called Psycho Goreman. And these kids like so, like awaken this warrior from another planet. It's like very Power Rangers-esque. It's very gory. It's very funny. Um, it's just a lot of fun. My actual pick for 2021 is Come On, Come On, which stars Joaquin Phoenix. And uh, this is like similar to the squid in the world this was another like just very personal movie like just watched it at just the right time in life where it joaquin phoenix uh in the movie his sister has to go take care of her husband who has bipolar disorder and so he is tasked with looking after like his nephew and it's about like a man who is like used to kind of being on his own like having to step in like to this role of being like a father figure for a child. And it's about like, you can never really be ready for something like that. And it's like about like how being a parent may not always be something that like you want to be, but like it has a very like realistic look at being a parent and how like sometimes it's like difficult, but it's also like the most rewarding thing that you could possibly ever do for somebody and for another like human life. And like walking Phoenix is kind of coming to these realizations as he takes care of his nephew throughout the movie. It's shot in black and white. It's a great looking movie. Great performance. 2022. (laughs) Barbarian. Barbarian is up there. Yeah. Hands down, Barbarian. 
What is that? I never heard of it. You didn't watch it? No. Oh my gosh. I don't want to spoil that one. But Bar- that's like the coolest part about it. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a movie you're just going to have to watch. Where yeah. Is it? is it like a theater I, movie or is it? I think it's like notoriously one of these movies that's like disappearing because it was made like for a streaming service or something like like it's made for HBO and like HBO like kind of removed it from their service. So now it's like, well, how, how the fuck are we supposed to ever watch this movie? Uh, but like talk about a plot twist. I mean, it what it says, it's it's about a young woman that goes to an Airbnb and discovers another person is already there. Which is just person? which is just like the first I cannot even say minutes. Right. I we can't even say the rest. It's incredible though. Hmm. Interesting. It Interesting. Blew Very my mind that movie did. I just have a hard time with horror movies since the grudge. I don't think it's really even it's consider i think it's labeled a horror movie but it's really more of a thriller Mm -hmm. um and it has a story behind it behind the the main scary component yes yeah my 2022 movie was i think the actually the only one that i saw in theaters this past year was the whale stop we've come full circle oh wow what (laughs) i I thought the movie was terrible. I thought it was cool, man. Yeah, the- that's if someone said, "Hey, did you like the whale?" You're gonna go, "It was cool, man." <laughs> <laughs> that's how you describe it. No, oh, it's not like, <laughs> like <laughs> seeing Brendan Fraser, Fraser back in action was cool. I'd agree, and I love uh, him as a guy. Yep. And I thought the movie you was... You love him as a guy. <laughs> he's a great guy. He's, he's just, just a cool guy. He's very good at being a guy. <laughs> no, he's really cool, man. He seems like he's pretty chill. Um, yeah, I'd hang out with him outside of movies. <laughs> we could go get a cup of coffee together. We can, you know, we can just like, I don't know, go for a hike. Well, for- since you mentioned Barbarian... <laughs> I will use. Yeah, I'm not following that up with anything. <laughs> I moving right along again. I will use my 2022 pick to go with two movies that are intrinsically linked, uh-huh. in which we will be getting the third installment here in 2024, and this would be X and Pearl. Oh, oh yeah, two yeah. movies that are kind of flawed but that i still like really enjoyed and i'm glad that they exist and i don't necessarily know that i needed pearl and i kind of really just like x on its own and i like pearl on their own and i don't really know as though they need to connect i don't really know as if this needs to be like a trilogy of movies but Mm -hmm. that's the world we live in and so i i liked both of these movies even though if i i don't really like the somewhat forced connective tissue between the two of them Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, still very enjoyable, wa- watchable movies. Uh, I would like to watch Pearl again. I think I fell asleep halfway through that. I don't, X was really good. I think halfway through is very generous. Oh, okay. <laughs> so at the beginning of Pearl, but I did watch X and I thought that was really good. All right. That is 2022. As we are recording this, 2023 is wrapping up, <laughs> but we can go around. Are there any movies from 2023? That you, it's too early to say that they've had an impact on you, but any movies that you think could leave some kind of impact on you. I am going to go ahead and say, I didn't think I would choose this, but no one will save you. Oh, yes. With honorable mentions to Knock at the Cabin and Please Don't Destroy the Treasure of Foggy Mountain. You should watch that movie. You would love it. It's It's hilarious. It's funny? It's so funny. Who is it? It's, it's three just SNL three random guys. dudes. Are they from SNL? Yeah. I thought they were three random dudes. That sounds cool. What? It's hilarious. Um, but No One Will Save You was really interesting. I wasn't sure that I liked it at first, but thinking back, I don't know. The, it, the way it ended was pretty cool. And it was silent, which was different. Mm-hmm. It's really the first alien movie that enticed me. Which is controversial to say. I know there's a lot of alien movies out there, but a few, yeah, a few. Chef, anything from 2023? 80 for Brady. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, that and Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite's not a movie. I will be editing that out. You don't know the lore, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You have seen 
a work of the master, and you're not going to, you're not even going to mention it. I'm not going to say Killers of the Flower Moon. Any movie then that you'd like to throw up that came out this year, last year? Sorry. Fine, I'll say Killers of the Flower Moon. Did you actually enjoy that movie, or are you just saying? No, it? I enjoyed it. It's just, it's not something I'm going to really take with me. Like it wasn't that memorable of an experience. So not at all what the exercise is asking you to do. No. Well, it's like I didn't see anything this year that like actually stuck out. I granted this year has been a little bit of a down year for movies for me, but like even just like generally speaking outside of that, I didn't connect with anything this year in a larger capacity. At all? At all. Hmm. At mm-hmm. all. Like that and then and that's not because I didn't want to. It was just like nothing truly stuck with me. You haven't watched enough movies then. Apparently mm-hmm. not. Uh, I would say play a lot of Fortnite. Oh my God. God, that's your problem. <laughs> Sponsored by Fortnite. I that's wish. why. And a bunch of ten-year-olds. Thank you. You're Epic too busy Games. grittying on people instead of watching movies. <laughs> we grittying on the grave. Ain't nothing wrong with a good chug jug on the weekends. <laughs> You're in fucking Tomato <laughs> Town instead of watching. <laughs> Uh, some movies I would say I probably will watch again and will stick with me would be The Killer, uh, David Fincher's movie from this year. Sorry, Michael Fassbender. Did and, I watch that with you? Yep. Oh, shit. And probably... Um, I mean, I could throw a couple out, you know? Um, throw them out. Throw them out. The Holdovers, starring Paul Giamatti, which is an, an incredible movie. Uh, Dark Harvest is a movie that I unf- is oh, going to be like killer okay. is really good with some really yeah. awesome practical effects that seemingly like is just going to get lost to a streaming service and like nobody's going to see it because I haven't seen anybody talk about it and it's a really good horror movie. Uh, another one I would throw out is Bottoms, which is probably the funniest movie I've seen this year. Where the two girls like start that self defense oh, class like, to yes. meet girls. Oh, oh yes, 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 I, I forgot about, about that. That was kick ass, actually. That was really funny. Has, I like girls. It has Marshawn Lynch in it. But <laughs> oh my God. that brings us to the end of this episode. <laughs> Anything else you guys need to throw out? Any movie from any year that we've been alive? <sighs> so many. Anything so many. to throw out? From I'm any just, movie We're that... just going to yell out movies? Since we've been alive, mm-hmm. uh, Miss Congeniality. Okay, That's a good she's one. all that. Drive me crazy. Never been kissed. Girl interrupted. The Ever. Princess Diaries. Ooh. Save the Last Dance. Josie and the Pussycats. I'm surprised Save the Last Dance did not get said. What um? What did I say? For- oh, I said my first Mister. But 2001 was really dedicated to glitter. So Emperor's New Groove. There's a lot Emperor's of good movies. New Groove. All right. Yeah. I didn't, <laughs> good burger. Sorry to interrupt. Works of being a wallflower. Ah, uh, yep, that was one on my list. Every... I didn't mention the Lincoln lawyer. Ew, uh, name something better. Uh, okay. Um... <laughs> Nick and Nora's infinite playlist. Yuck. <laughs> um, every Naruto movie. And that's where we end this. <laughs> wait, wait, the sister to the traveling pants. One, two, and three. Okay. Oh, all three. Ah, uh, hell yeah! I had all the books when I was younger. Well, There's nothing like a sisterhood. That's the perfect place to end this. There's nothing like a sisterhood. <laughs> you heard it here first. You think about it. We're all just one big sister. Like the Yaya That's sisterhood. That's true. Yeah. Like f- salmon fishing in the Yemen. You lost me there. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. If that sounded like a lot of movies, that's because it was. But hopefully you now have a better understanding of who we are as not just moviegoers, not just people who in love this, but also who we are as people. Love us or hate us, we are who we are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Make sure you leave us a rating or a view. You get in touch with us. Let us know the movies that define who you are as a person. Maybe we will even read them out on the show and add them to our own pool. If we like them. And until next time, keep enjoying good things. Stay safe out there. Goodbye, everybody. Good night.